praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God.
God is our healer, deliverer, and living hope. God is my refuge and strength in times of problems and troubles. God is my comforter and the source of my strength. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside white waters. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my hiding place. He will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. God is our great provider in times of needs. The Lord is our great provider. is my healer and great physician. Our God satisfies all my needs. His presence gives me peace and contentment. God is my safe dwelling place. God is my great provider. Efficiency. I have learned to be content and to trust Him at all times. God is our ever faithful great shepherd.
Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, ACGC, isang pong mapagpala na pinagkalawan muli tayo ng ating Panginoon na isa pang pagkakataon para siya ay ating awitan, purihin, at pasalamatan sa pamamagitan ng mga awitin. Tunay nga na tayo ay nasa ikapitong buwan ng 2021 at ganun pa rin ang ating sitwasyon. So balit sa napakabuting Diyos na meron tayo, tayo pa rin ay nagkakaroon ng pribilehyo na mag makapaglingkod sa Kanya. There is no more important issue in life than one's relationship to God through faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone needs Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior on the journey from here to eternity. Declares your majesty, our lives are resounding with your praise. We see your spirit moving, we burn with holy fire, and your glory is seen through all the earth. You said eternity. Shout a victory cry from here to 
for the better. May mga panahon na tayo ay nade-discourage at minsan pa tayo ay lumalayo sa Kanya. But the Lord has always a way of drawing us back to Himself. And turning to God brings times of refreshing. Times of refreshing Here your presence no greater blessing than being with you my soul is restored my mind is renewed No greater joy, Lord, than being with you. Let's sing it again. Times of refreshing. Times of refreshing. Here in your presence.
Purihin po ang Panginoon sa umagang ito. And we thank God for His great love for each one of us. Salamat sa Panginoon for this opportunity for us to celebrate this communion. We are here to celebrate the communion para po i-remember at i-acknowledge what Christ has done on the cross. Sinasabi po sa Bible that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. At the same Bible na nagsasabi, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, yung eternal life po ay makakamtan lang po natin through Jesus Christ our Lord. And because of our sins, hindi po tayo mapunta sa langit and hindi po natin matanggap yung eternal life na pinapromise po sa Bible. So because of that, and because of the love of God, pinadala niya ang kanyang bugtong na anak. Na sinasabi pa nga sa Bible, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So because of the love of God, He sent His Son to this world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. So ito pong communion with these elements that symbolize the body and the blood of our Lord. This is one of the ways na hindi po natin makalimutan kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa atin. And this is one of the ways na hindi po natin kalimutan o makalimutan na pasalamatan natin ang Panginoon sa kanyang kabutihan at sa kanyang pagmamahal. And this is also one of the ways for us to remember and to always be reminded that tayo pong lahat ay willing din magbigay nating buhay for the sake of Christ. Kapatid, how much do you thank God for His great love for you? At isang tanong, mas importante yung tanong, tinanggap mo na ba si Jesus Christ sa buhay mo as your Savior and Lord? Kapatid, itong communion will not bring us to heaven. But itong communion po nito na celebration nito, again, sinabi ko kanina, to remember and to acknowledge Christ sa buhay natin. So kahit ilang communion pa po ang ating atinan, ilang elements pa ang ating ititake, if we don't have Jesus Christ in our lives as our Savior and Lord, we cannot go to heaven. But with this communion, we are here to thank God for the great assurance that we can be with Christ Jesus, we can be with God in heaven forever because of His uh, great love, because of what He has done on the cross for paying the penalty of our sins. So mga kapatid, this time I want us to bow down our heads. Pasalamatan po natin ang Panginoon for His love for each one of us. But I challenge you also, kapatid, if you, don't, if you did not yet receive Jesus Christ in your life as your Savior and Lord, I challenge you na tanggapin niyo siya ngayon sa buhay niyo. Acknowledge Him as your Savior and Lord. Again, be reminded na ang simbahan po will not bring us to heaven. Communion will not bring us to heaven. Prayer will not bring us to heaven. Only having the right relationship with Christ Jesus by accepting Him in our lives as our Savior and Lord will bring us to heaven. So now this last time, let's bow down our heads. Para sa lahat po na tumanggap na kay Christ as your Savior and Lord, thank God. Pasalamatan niyo ang Panginoon for His love and for the great uh, assurance na tayo po ay mapunta sa langit. At para sa iyo na gustong tumanggap ni Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, Sundin niyo po ang prayer ko ngayon. Gawin niyo po na sarili niyong panalangin. At gawin niyo po ito from the bottom of your heart. Okay? So let's all together pray. Sa lahat ng tatanggap kay Christ, sundin niyo po ako. Lord Jesus, kailangan po kita sa buhay ko. Patawarin niyo po ako sa aking mga kasalanan. Sa oras po na ito, tinatanggap kita sa aking buhay bilang aking tagapagligtas at aking Panginoon. Simula po ngayon, kayo na po ang siya maghari sa buhay ko. Kayo na po ang aking susundin sa buhay ko. Tulungan niyo po ako 
na gawin ang mga nararapat gawin ayon sa iyong kalooban. At salamat po sa kasiguruhan na ako po'y makatanggap ng eternal life at pupunta ng langit when I receive you as, I, as, my, as my Savior and Lord. So at this moment, once again, I receive you into my life as my Savior and Lord. Take full control of me. This I pray in your name. Amen. Mga kapatid, salamat sa Panginoon for His love for each one of us. And communion, communion as well reminds us that we have also to go and share the gospel to others. Sinasabi pa nga sa Bible din, every time we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Ibig sabihin, in-acknowledge natin at sinasabi natin sa buong mundo at kahit kanino na because of the love of God and because of Jesus Christ, mayroon tayong pag-asa sa buhay. So this time, I want us as well to bow down our heads again and let us offer our lives to Him. Telling God, Lord, salamat po sa iyong pagmamahal. So Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. And this time, I offer my life to you. Use me for your glory and your honor. Let's again all pray together. Father in heaven, once again, we thank you for your love. And this time, we offer our lives to you. Use us, O God, as your instruments to bring forth the gospel of salvation to other people. And I pray, O God, that you'll empower us with your Holy Spirit and use us for your glory and your honor. And this time, O God, please sanctify these elements that your people had prepared in their respective houses. I pray, Lord, that you'll sanctify these elements that symbolize the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we partake of this. And help us, Lord, to celebrate this communion with gratitude in our hearts, with joy, O God, and continually giving you thanks, O God, sa lahat po ng mga bagay na ginagawa niyo po sa buhay namin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So lahat po ng mga heads of the family, you may now distribute the elements to your family members. Okay, so tapos na pong i-distribute. So wherever you are this time, please stand up. Okay, tayo po tayong lahat and we will partake of these elements. The Lord Jesus, on the night when He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. In this same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink of the cup together. Father in heaven, we continue to give you thanks for your love. We continue to offer our lives to you, to be used by you as your instruments. Lord Jesus, please melt and mold us into the kind of individuals you want us to be. Help us to be like you more and more each day. Once again, we thank you for your love. We give you all the glory and honor. Be magnified and be exalted all the days of our lives till eternity. This we ask and pray in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. God bless us all.
Good morning everyone. Welcome to Alliance Christian Gospel Church. Thank you for joining us in Facebook or in YouTube. We thank God for this beautiful day He has given us to be gathered together as a family wherever you are this time. And I hope and pray that we will enjoy the presence of God with us this morning. And I hope and also pray that every one of us is ready to listen to Him and even to give glory to God in our worship service. Welcome to this new preaching series entitled Stewardship. Stewardship. Ano ba pong ibig sabihin ng stewardship? According to Miriam Webster, stewardship is the conducting, supervising, or managing of something. It is the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Mga kapatid, lahat po tayo dito sa mundo are stewards. Yes, we are all stewards of God. Wala pong bagay dito sa mundo na tayo po ang may-ari. Lahat ng bagay sa mundo ang Diyos po ang gumawa at siya po yung may-ari. Naalala ko po yung isang kanta ng isang simbahan na ang, na ang sinasabi po sa kanta ay Hiram sa Diyos. Ewan ko lang if you heard that song. Hiram sa Diyos ang aking buhay. So even our lives, hindi po natin pagmamay-ari. We are all but stewards of our lives at sa lahat po ng mga resources na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. Everything na nakikita natin at binigay ni Lord sa atin, sinasabi pa nga dyan, were given to us, entrusted to us for our care. Pangalagaan po nating mabuti. So in this series, pag-usapan po natin ang ilang mga bagay na kailangan po natin pangalagaan ng mabuti. And this morning, we'll be talking about time. Time. Let us be good stewards of our time. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng time? Again, according to the dictionary, time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and the future regarded as a whole. It is also a point of time as measured in hours and minutes past midnight or noon. So yun po ang oras. Lahat po tayo dito sa mundo ay may oras na ipinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa atin. So please get ready with your Bibles with you at wag mo nating uh, kaligtaan na hawakan ang ating Bible at buksan po natin mamaya may konti sa iba't ibang mga passages. Okay? But this time, for our scripture reading, please open your Bibles with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. I believe that this is a common passage to each one of us. So, let me read to you from the New International Version, our scripture reading found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. Sinasabi po dito, There is time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? 
I have seen the burden of God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all, in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere Him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this another time to hear from your word. I pray, O God, that you help us glorify you as we listen and learn from your word, O God. Give us wisdom to understand the truth. And help us, Lord, to be ready to apply the truth sa buhay po namin, Panginoon. At salamat po, Panginoon, sa lahat ng bagay na gagawin niyo po sa amin sa umagang ito. Binabalik po namin sa iyo ang lahat ng papurit pa sa salamat. Ito po yung sa pangalan Jesus. Amen. How to manage our time wisely? Kailangan po natin alamin ang sagot nito. So that tayo po ay matulungan to be good stewards of time. So paano po natin i-manage ang time natin wisely? Lahat pong tao ay binamanage po nila ang kanilang oras. But hindi po lahat are wisely managing their time. But para sa atin, especially para sa atin mga Christians, mga anak ng Diyos na alam natin na kailangan natin maging good steward and faithful steward of God, let us know how to manage our time wisely. Apat na bagay po na kailangan natin gawin upang tayo po ay matulungan to manage our time wisely. Una po, let us know the source. Know your source. Let us know the source of time. Saan po ba galing yung oras? Sa orasan ba? Galing ba sa pag-asa? Sa DOST? Sa NASA? Saan po ba galing yung oras? Let me read to you Psalm 24 verse 1. At mababasa rin natin ito sa 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 26. Na sinasabi po dito, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it. So ang mundo raw ay pagmamayari ng Diyos at ang lahat ng nasa mundo at ang lahat ng nakatira o namumuhay sa mundo ay pagmamayari ng Diyos. And this includes time. Ang oras po ay galing sa Diyos at siya po ang mayari ng oras. At ang oras po ay ipinagkaloob ng Diyos sa atin. And God is so fair and so just. Dahil lahat po tayo, mayaman man o mahirap, bata o matanda, lalaki o babae, ipinagkalooban ng Panginoon ng 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Wala pong tao na mas pabor na binigyan ng 26 hours or more than 24 hours? Meron, wala ding tao na ipinagkait sa kanya yung 24 hours dahil binigyan na siya ng 20 hours. Lahat po tayo, 24 hours a day ang binigay ng Panginoon. Or 168 hours a week. At ang 24 hours po na ito, araw-araw, at 168 hours a week, ay kailangan po natin i-manage wisely. Ibig sabihin, gamitin natin sa tamang paraan. God is the source of time. At sinasabi pa nga ng passage natin kanina sa Ecclesiastes, God made all things beautiful in its time. 
At sa bandang huli po, sinabi doon, ginawa to ng Panginoon so that men will revere Him. Ibig sabihin, even sa paggamit ating oras, kailangan mapupuri natin ang Panginoon. God must be revered. God must be exalted. Kaya nga sinasabi din sa isang pasis ng Bible that let us do everything for the glory of God. So let us know the source of time. And God is the source of time. Sinabi pa ni Rick Warren, Time is your most precious gift because you only have a set amount of it. Time is our most precious gift. Yes, maganda po pakinggan na precious gift pa lang oras para sa atin. That's why pangalagahan natin mabuti ang regalo na ipinagkaloob ng Diyos sa atin. Pangalawang bagay po, know your limit. Know your limit. Para matulungan tayo to manage our time wisely, let us know our limit. Please open your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 1. Tingnan po natin yung creation story. Allow me to read this to you, pero hindi ko po isa-isahin ang mga verses. Okay? Uh, just sundan nyo po ang aking binabasa. Okay? Sinasabi dito sa Genesis chapter 1. And by, by the way, pansinin nyo lang po yung mga, mga highlighted na words na nilagay ko dito. Sinasabi po dito, In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, Let there be light. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. And God called the expanse sky. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered and to one place, and let dry ground appear. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let, there, let the water teem with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. In chapter 2, verse 2, By the seventh day, God finished the work he had been doing, Doing so, on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. So, kung napansin po natin yung creation story, marami pong ginagawa ang Diyos sa isang linggo. Araw-araw, mayroon po siyang ginawa. At sinasabi pa nga sa mga verses, di ba? And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. The third day, the fourth day, up to the seventh day. Kung napansin po natin dito, hindi po ginawa ng Diyos ang buong mundo, including yung tao, sa isang araw lang. Bakit po ba? Hindi niya bang kayang gawin yun? Kapatid, kaya niyang gawin yan. Because our God has no limit. Pero bakit po dito sa, sa, sa creation story, sa creation account, bakit po as if may limit ang kanyang ginagawa? And in fact, sa seventh day, sinabi pa nga dito, God finished His work and He rested on the seventh day. 
Ibig bang sabihin ang ating Diyos ay napapagod? Hindi po napapagod ang Diyos. Pero dito sinasabi nga He rested. In reading this passage and analyzing this passage, nakikita ko po dito kapatid na pinapakita po sa atin ang kahalagahan ng paglilimit sa ating sarili. Lalong-lalo na tayo mga human beings. Okay? Hindi po natin kayang gawin ang maraming mga bagay sa isang araw. At kailangan din natin magpahinga. Dito po natin makikita yung importance ng pahinga. May ilang tao po ngayon parang hindi na marunong magpahinga. O kumbaga pa parang wala sa kanilang vocabulary ang word na rest or pahinga. Dahil gusto nilang kumayod ng kumayod ng kumayod upang magkapera na magkapera na magkapera. Ang iba naman dahil nahirapan sa buhay, gustong kumayod ng kumayod ng kumayod para at least man lang makakain sila araw-araw. Pero kapatid, mayaman ka man o mahirap o katamtaman lang, lahat po tayo kailangan nating may limit sa ating ginagawa. At kailangan din natin magpahinga. Dito po ang emphasis sa passage na ito sa Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 verse 2. Ay wag po nating gawin ang lahat ng bagay sa isang araw. At kailangan natin magpahinga sa lahat ng ating ginagawa. Sabi pa ni Nolan Ryan, Everyone has limits. You just have to learn what your limits are and deal with them accordingly. Everyone, wala pong excuse. Lahat ng tao ay may limitasyon. Kaya wag po nating punuin ang ating sarili ng maraming, ta- ng maraming trabaho. Multitasking is good in some, in some ways. But it is not all the time good to multitask, lalong-lalo na pag nag-multitask ka na sobrang dami, na minsan hindi mo na alam ano yung uunahin mo. Nakakalito din po, kapatid, ang multitasking. So know your limit. Isipin mo, tao lang po tayo. Even computers have limit. Sa computer ngayon, pwede ka mag-multitask. Pero minsan, pag marami ng, ang, marami ng ginagawa mo, naghahang minsan. Lalong-lalo na pag yung computer mo ay may kalumaan na. So kung tayo, ako ang computer na electronic gadget may, may limit, tayo rin may limit. Kung ang Diyos natin walang limit, pero sa kanyang creation story, nililimitahan niya ang kanyang ginawa, Ibig sabihin tayo, we must also know our limit. And let's just carry or do the things hanggang sa ating limit, hanggang sa ating kaya. And this leads us to our the third thing na kailangan natin gawin to, for us to be able to manage our time wisely. Let us know our capacity. Know our capacity. Kanina, know your limits. Ibig sabihin, know the number of works na kaya mong gawin o kailangan mong gawin araw-araw. Ito namang capacity. No? Capacity is the individual's mental and physical ability. Ano bang capacity mo? Ano ba yung capability mo na gumawa ng mga bagay na ikaw ay maging efficient? So, after knowing your limits, know your capacity. For you to be able to do things efficiently. Dito po sa Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. Sinasabi po dito, In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Christian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on tables. Brothers, 
Jews seven men from among you who were known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over them and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. So dito po sa passage na ito, nakita po natin dito that the, the apostles, okay, they were doing many things in life. They pray for the people, they preach, and they also did the social work, especially in giving help to the poor and the needy, especially yung mga, mga widows and orphans. At nabasa po natin kanina, di ba, that during those days, the number of disciples were getting bigger. Dumadami po yung mga nakakilala kay Kristo. At dumadami rin po yung mga taong kailangang bigyan din ng tulong uh, financially, materially, okay? yung social work, kailangan nila. So, si, itong mga apostles, in the, yung unang gawa, unang na itong ginawa, they were so effective. They were so efficient in doing the preaching, the praying, and even the social, the social work. Yung community work. Pero habang tumatagal, habang dumadami ang kanilang dapat tulungan, napansin nila na hindi na sila ganun ka-efficient sa kanilang trabaho. Kaya nila, okay, yung limit, kaya nila ang maraming trabaho, but hindi sila capable na gawin ang trabaho efficiently. Kasi sinabi nga nila, Tinawag nila yung mga disciples, sinabi, mamili kayo. Okay? Choose men among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. At ipakita nyo sa amin, dalhin nyo sila sa amin. At tingnan namin kung talaga bang sila ay full of spirit and wisdom, then we will turn this responsibility over to them. We will delegate this social work, okay? this community work to them, para yung attention namin ay mabigay namin sa pinaka-main namin na trabaho, which is to pray for the people and to preach and teach the word. So, these apostles, they acknowledge their limits. They also acknowledge their capacity. They acknowledge their capacity because they wanted to do the things efficiently. Again, sa na, nabanggit ko kanina, na passage sa Bible, sinasabi doon na lahat ng ating gagawin, whether in words or in deeds, do it all for the glory of God. And God wants us to be efficient sa lahat ng ating ginagawa. God wants us to give our best sa lahat ating ginagawa. Kung sobrang dami po ang ating ginagawa, chances are, hindi natin alam kung ano uunahin. And dahil hindi na natin alam ang ating unahin, we are not capable of doing things efficiently dahil hindi na tayo makapag-isip ng tama. Natataranta na tayo. Ang iba nga, they will become anxious. Okay? At ang iba, susurrender na lang dahil sobrang dami na. Okay? Punong-puno na ang kanilang kamay na hindi na alam ano ang unang gawin. That's why, baga pa, barabara na lang ang kanilang ginagawa. Kung sa pagkain pa, half-cooked ang kanilang ginagawa. Although, masarap ang half-cooked, lalo na pag gulay. Diba? Mas ano siya, mas masarap siya. Pero, sabihin natin pag pagkain, kung kanin, hindi pwedeng half-cooked half ang kanin. At ang ibang ulam, yung karne, no? mas maganda siya, talagang well done siya. No? Hindi pwedeng half-cooked. So kapatid, mas masarap ang kanin o yung luto natin pag talagang sakto ang kanyang pagluto na hindi po minamadali. Ganun din po sa trabaho, sa paggamit ng oras. Let us know our capacity. So, ibig sabihin, sa 24 hours natin every day at 168 hours a week, Hindi po natin kayang ikarga lahat ng gusto nating gawin sa mga oras na yan. 
So, paano nyo i-manage ang oras nyo pag ang dami mong nilalagay na trabaho? Okay? At paano natin mamamanage ang oras natin at maging efficient tayo sa ating trabaho kung sobra-sobra? So, kapatid, let us know the source of time and that is God. And because God is a source of time, at ang oras po ay pinagkaloob ni Lord sa atin, gamitin natin ating oras sa tamang paraan. At let us know our limits para wala pong oras na masasayang. And let us as well know our capacity para hindi masasayang oras natin, ang effort natin sa paggamit ng ating oras o sa paglaan ng mga trabaho sa lahat ng mga oras na ipinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa atin. Pang-apat, know your priority. Know your priority. Sinasabi pa nga sa ating scripture reading kanina sa Ecclesiastes, There is time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. May oras po para sa lahat ng bagay. May oras po para sa lahat ng gawain. May oras po sa lahat na pwede natin gawin sa buhay natin. At kailangan yung oras na yun ay gamitin natin sa tama. At yung mga bagay na gagawin natin, ilagay natin sa tamang oras. So, know your priority. Lalong-lalo na pag marami kang gustong gawin or maraming pinapagawa sa'yo kung ikaw ay nag nagtatrabaho. So, dahil nga, kailangan natin alamin ating limit at kailangan nating alamin nating capacity because we want to be efficient sa ating work. So this is the solution pag maraming mga bagay na ipapagawa sa iyo. Know your priority. Kung mga pa ilista mo ang lahat ng mga dapat mong gawin o ga- kailangan mong ma-accomplish for that day or for that week. Okay? So this is a recommendation for you para matulungan kang gamitin ang oras mo sa tama. At ang lahat ng trabaho na kailangan gawin ay talagang mata- matabaho mo at magawa mo efficiently. So, unang-una again, ilista mo. Kumuha ka ng papel, ball pen, ilista mo lahat ng kaila- kailangan mo gawin. TTD, things to do. No? TTD. Uh, I recommend papel at ball pen or lapis. Huwag lang yung cellphone. Kasi makikita mo doon at mabilis na mag-scratch, maraming, mabilis na mag, uh, I mean, mag-rearrange, marami, pwede kang mag-crash ni may isang bagay. Mas, mas, mas visible po lahat ng mga bagay na gagawin mo. So, na, nalista mo na randomly ang lahat ng mga kailangan mong gawin. Balikan mo listahan mo. Tingnan mo doon kung saan doon ang pinaka-importante, saan ang urgent, saan yung important at saan yung less important. Hindi po lahat ng importante yung bagay urgent. On the other hand, hindi po lahat ng urgent importante. So, dapat let us be wise in determining the things para sa ating priority. Okay? So, araw-araw dapat may priority ka and in that week may priority ka rin kapatid. At sa ating priority, huwag nating kalimutan ang limang bagay. Unang-una, dapat nasa listahan ng priority mo ang Diyos. Ang Diyos. Pangalawa, nasa listahan ng priority mo ang sarili mo. Pangatlo, nasa listahan ng priority mo ang trabaho mo. Pang-apat, nasa listahan ng priority mo ang pamilya mo. At pang-lima, nasa listahan ng priority mo ang ibang mga bagay. So, sa 24 hours natin, ilang oras ba ang nilalaan mo para kay Lord? By the way, dapat sa priority list mo, number one talaga si God. Number one si God. Every day. Not only every week, but every day. So, isa, araw-araw kapatid, ilang oras ang nilalaan mo with the Lord? 
Ilang oras ang nilalaan mo for prayer, Bible reading, and meditation? Kasama na po doon yung pag, para prayer mo sa pagkain, prayer mo sa paggising sa umaga, prayer mo bago matulog sa gabi. Pero kulang pa yan kapatid. Kailangan maglaan tayo ng oras sa isang araw. And mostly recommended first hour in the morning. Early morning. At least, sabihin ko, siguro sabihin natin, at least 30 minutes. Hindi naman, ang 30 minutes po ay hindi po yan matagal. Okay? Other people nga, they spend 2 hours a day with the Lord. So spend time with God every day. Isipin mo meron lang tayong 24 hours. Okay, tingnan natin sa 24 hours natin. Palagay natin, 30 minutes lang ibigay natin para kay Lord. So meron pa tayong ilang oras sa tira. 23 hours and 30 minutes. Kung ikaw ay nagtatrabaho, especially pag ikaw ay office worker, or kahit hindi office worker, ang trabaho natin ay average is 8 hours a day. Depende sa schedule, pero yung average sa schedule is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. 8 hours a day. Sa, for your work. Okay? So, sa 24 hours natin, ilan na lang ang natira? 24 minus 8 and a half hours. Okay? So, sige na. You, you do your math. Then, sa trabaho mo, kapatid, hindi lang yung 8 hours ang para sa trabaho mo actually. Pati yung travel time mo, kasama yan sa bigyan mo ng oras para sa yung trabaho. Okay, yung travel hour mo. Okay lang siguro sa mga work from home. Pero kahit nag-work from home ka, dapat may preparation ka for your work. ba? So at least 15 minutes before 8 o'clock, nasa computer ka na para hindi ka mag hindi gahol sa oras yung ginagawa mo. Pero para sa mga nagbibiyahe, you will spend, okay, siguro 2 to 3 hours back and forth sa trabaho sa sa biyahe. Uh, yung anak ko nga 4 hours ang ang biyahe niya back and forth ha, total. So, ibig sabihin hindi lang 8 hours ilalaan natin for our work. Sabihin natin 10 to 12 hours. Okay? So, kung 10 to 12 hours so, ang natira sa oras natin ay 12 hours na lang. ba? So, sa, sabi din ng mga, mga health experts, ang tulog ng tao ay kailangan between 6 to 10 hours. Depende sa kailangan ng katawan mo or depende sa edad mo. So, yung average number of hours of sleep is 8 hours. Okay? 8 hours. At least, naka, nasa bed ka. So, 12 plus 8. Okay? So, apat na oras na lang ang natira. Ay, kasi, hindi pala at apat na oras kasi binawasan natin ng 30 minutes para sa Lord. No? So, 3 and a half hours na lang. So, tingnan natin anong pwedeng gawin natin sa 3 and a half hours. Para sa sarili, para sa pamilya, at para sa ibang bagay. Kapatid, Ibig sabihin, kung mag- marami kang gustong gawin, kulang yung 24 hours mo. That's why we need to know our priority sa araw na yan. At even sa buong linggo, o sabihin natin wala kang oras para sa pamilya mo sa, sa weekdays dahil nga sobrang busy, naiintindihan yan, pero at least mayroon ka namang oras na magpag-usap sa kanila kahit man lang 15 minutes. During weekend, doon mo ibuhos yung oras mo for your family. Okay? At pag Sunday, kapatid, dapat bigyan natin ng tamang oras ang Panginoon. Sa creation story kanina, God created, or God worked for six days. On the seventh day, He rested. Tayo rin, kapatid, bigyan natin ng oras ang pagpahinga. No, maliban sa 8 hours na tulog, magpahinga tayo sa ating buong linggo na trabaho. At maglaan tayo ng oras para sa Diyos. Ang tanong kapatid, ilang oras ang nilalaan mo para kay Lord during Sundays? Ang simba natin ay one, siguro average of one and a half hours. 
Pero how much time do you spend for the preparation? Kapatid, I encourage you, always make God the priority sa buhay mo, araw-araw, linggo-linggo. I, 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 I challenge you as well, to really be serious in giving time for worship service every Sunday. Join us, physically or virtually. And to be a wise manager ng oras natin, dapat ilagay natin sa ating orasan o sa ating kalen- calendar na 10 o'clock is a time to worship God. Online man or physical. Kasi yung itong schedule natin. Maliban kung sa ibang simbahan ka, kung ano mo schedule, kung anong schedule ng simba, ilagay mo sa calendar. May mga tao nagsasabi, ah, mamayang gabi na ako magsimba. Total, pwede ko namang i-replay ang virtual na, na simba. Pero kapatid, marami sa kanila na nagsasabi mamayang gabi na, mamayang hapon na, mamayang konti na magsimba, ay hindi po natutuloy ang pagsimba. Bakit? Na-overwhelm na sila sa ibang mga gawain. So let us make God the priority every Sunday. Okay? So let us manage our time wisely by knowing your priority. So kahit sino ka man, isudyante ka man, o trabahante, o kung sino, dapat may listahan tayo. Para hindi natin masayang ating oras at wala tayong makaligtaan na trabaho. At kung talagang sobra-sobra na ang gawain mo, more than your limit, and more than your capacity, you delegate that work to other people. Kung, kung tingnan mo sa inyong priority list, yung mga pinaka-last na priority, pwede niyo yung tanggalin. Actually, maraming bagay na pwede nating tanggalin sa ating buhay na hindi naman ganun importante Or ilagay lang natin sa ating mga vacant na oras. So, kapatid, gaano ba ka-importante ang iyong ginagawa ngayon sa buhay mo? Araw-araw at linggo-linggo. Gumagawa ka ba ng schedule? Pinagpaplanuhan mo ba yung mga gawain mo araw-araw? Wisely? Sinabi po ni Benjamin Franklin, If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So if you fail to make your priority list, you are planning to fail to be a good manager of your time na ipinagkaloob ni Lord sa iyo. So kapatid, let us manage our time wisely by knowing our priority. Again, sa tanong ko kanina, gaano ba importante ang ginagawa mo araw-araw? Sige nga, tingnan mo nga sa sarili mo. Ano yung mga bagay na masasabi mo na talagang kailangan mong gawin at yung mga bagay na pwede mo namang hindi gawin. Pero ginagawa mo yung mga pwede namang hindi gawin at naapektuhan yung mga bagay na kailangan mong gawin. So kung yan po ang struggle niyo kapatid, I encourage you to know your priority. Do a list that of the things for you to do. Every day or every week. At gamitin natin ng oras sa tamang paraan. Sa paglista rin po kapatid ng ating priority list at paggawa ng kalendar, may iwasan din po natin na malate sa mga schedules natin. Okay? So, ang pagiging late or madalas na late or na nasanay ka ng malate, it is not also a good stewardship of time kapatid. Lalong-lalo na pag ikaw ang nag-schedule ng oras, dapat kung ikaw ang nag-schedule ng oras, dapat nandoon ka at least 15 minutes before the time. Physically man or virtually, dapat prepared ka na. Kahit wala pang taong dumarating, dapat nandoon ka na dahil ikaw yung nag-schedule ng oras. So let us respect as well each other's time because marami ding tao nga makapatid na wise managers ng oras nila. So mga kapatid, let us be good stewards of our time. Remember, the source of time is God. And always remember na mayroon tayong limit, kapatid. May limitasyon tayo. 
and you must know your capacity para maging efficient ka sa lahat mong ginagawa sa paggamit ng oras mo at maging sa paggawa ng mga gawain. And know your priority para walang oras na masayang at walang trabaho na maiwan. May nabasa ako noon na hindi ko makalimutan na sinasabi, You cannot kill time without enduring eternity. So, pag may oras po tayo na sinayang, talagang maapektuhan ang ating kinabukasan. That's why we need to manage our time wisely. Sabi pa ni Robert Savage, Today, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is uncertain. Today is here. So, use it. Okay? Hindi na natin maibalik yung kahapon. At ang bukas po ay hindi natin sigurado kung ano mangyayari. Ang araw na ito, sinasabi nga, ay nandito na. Kaya gamitin natin sa tamang paraan. May isa ding author, no? an unknown author, na may sinulat siya. Ang title ay, Make the Most of Today. Allow me to read this to you. Make the most of today. Dito natin makikita yung value of time. Sinasabi dito, To realize the value of one year, ask a student who failed a grade. To realize the value of one month, ask the mother of a premature baby. To realize the value of one week, ask the editor of a weekly newspaper. To realize the value of one day, ask a daily wage laborer with kids to feed. To realize the value of one hour, ask the lovers who are waiting to meet. To realize the value of one minute, ask the person who just missed the train. To realize the value of one second, ask the person who just avoided an accident. To realize the value of one millisecond, ask the person who won a silver Olympic medal. Kapatid, every hour counts. Every minute counts. Every second counts. Every millisecond counts. That's why let us manage our time wisely. That we may give glory to God. That we may revere God. Let us manage our time wisely by knowing the source of our time, by knowing our limits, by knowing our capacity, and knowing our priority. Kung gagawin po natin ito, kapatid, wala pong oras na masasayang at wala pong trabaho na maiiwan. At tayo po ay maging masaya sa buhay natin, and God will also be happy and be magnified sa buhay natin. So this time, let's all bow down our heads. And let's see ourselves. Siya sa atin po natin sarili natin. Itanong natin sa sarili natin. Ano ba ang mga bagay na ginagawa ko araw-araw? Sige nga, just make an imaginary uh, list ng mga bagay na yung ginagawa araw-araw. At itanong mo sa sarili mo, ang lahat ba na itong ginagawa ko araw-araw o linggo-linggo ay talaga bang importante? Kailangan ba talaga itong gawin? Sige nga, make an imaginary list sa mga listahan at tingnan mo, kapatid, kung ano yung mga bagay dyan na importante at pwede namang wala sa buhay mo. Then, tanong yung sarili mo, ano ba yung mga bagay that hinders me na mag, ma, mag, ma, magawa ko lahat ng kailangan kong gawin? At itanong mo sa sarili mo, honestly, am I a wise manager of my time? So, let's come to God in prayer. Ask God for forgiveness if ever hindi mo minamanage ang oras mo wisely. 
Remember, time belongs to God and we need to manage it wisely. Humingi ka ng tawad sa Panginoon. And this time, ask God for help. Sabihin mo, Lord, tulungan niyo po ako na mamanage ko ang aking oras wisely. You pray to God, Lord, tulungan niyo ako na walang oras na masasayang sa akin. You pray to God, Lord, tulungan niyo po ako to glorify you, to revere you in managing my time. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the time na pinagkalob niyo po sa amin, Panginoon. 24 hours a day. Panginoon, marami po sa amin na makapagsabi na kulang po ang 24 hours sa lahat ng bagay na gusto namin gawin o kailangan namin gawin. But Lord, I pray that you help us to manage our time wisely. By always knowing, Lord, that time comes from you and it belongs to you. Help us, O oh God, to know our limits and to know our capacity. And help us as well, Lord, to prioritize the things that we need to do. And help us as well, O oh God, na tanggalin po namin sa aming sarili yung mga bagay na hindi naman po ganun importante. Hindi naman necessary Panginoon kung sila man lang Panginoon ay makakahinder upang yung mga importanteng gawain, importanteng bagay sa amin buhay Panginoon ay magawa namin Panginoon. Patawarin niyo po kami sa mga oras na sinasayang po namin. We admit Lord na there are times na yung may oras kami na nasasayang at parang pinapatay lang namin Panginoon. Panginoon, Tulungan niyo po kami to be good stewards sa oras na ipinagkalob niyo po sa amin. Help us, Lord, to value every second of our life. And I pray, O God, that you help us, give us wisdom from day to day, that we may give glory to your name. Father in heaven, once again, thank you for your word. And bless this, O God, into our hearts, O God. And this time, Lord, I remember to pray for our brethren na naapektuhan po Panginoon sa pagsabog o sa mga activities ng Taal Volcano. Lord, marami po sa kanila ang, naka, ang lumikas, Panginoon, at mas marami sa kanila, Panginoon, ay nasa evacuation centers, Panginoon. Lord, lumikas po sila para po for their safety. But Lord, sa mga evacuation centers, andin, andun din po mga pangamba nila Panginoon because of the social distancing at may mga takot ng iba Panginoon, baka rin may COVID. Lord, I pray that you will give them peace of mind. And I pray for your favor be upon the evacuees. Lord, you know their situation. And Lord, I pray for every LGU surrounding Taal Volcano. Give them wisdom, O God, sa pag-take uh, care, Panginoon, sa kanilang respective constituents, O God. And I pray, Lord, that you'll preserve the properties of the residents and even the lives, Lord, of the people and of the livestock, O God. And Lord, continually help our government sa pagtugon po ng mga pangailangan na aming bansa, hindi lang po for COVID-related, but even Lord, kagaya ng mga calamities at iba pang mga kailangan naming bansa, Panginoon. And help us, Lord, as citizens to be faithful in praying for our country because this country belongs to you. And I also pray, Lord, for our government leaders and officials. Continue, Lord, help them to be efficient sa kanilang mga gawain, Panginoon and help them, O God, to be patriotic sa kanilang uh, pagganap, Panginoon, sa kanilang mga tungkulin. 
And Lord, I also pray that you help every Filipino citizen to be prepared, Lord, O oh God, for our upcoming uh, national election, Panginoon. And for those ones, Lord, na hindi pa nakapag-register, na hindi pa sila registered voters, help them, Lord, na makapag-register na po sila. Salamat po, Panginoon, for the favor na pinapakita niya po sa aming bansa. In spite, Lord, sa mga pagkukulang namin as citizens. Lord, in the midst of this situation, thank you because you are always there. Lord, I continually pray for your people, continually provide for their needs, heal those who are sick, strengthen those who are weak, and provide uh, wisdom, guidance, and direction, Lord, upon each one, O God. Salamat po muli dahil kayo aming Diyos na buhay. You are our Heavenly Father who, have, who has the great plans and purpose, Lord, for our lives. So, Lord, we offer our lives to you. We commit also the church to you, the ACGC. I pray, God, that you'll continually uh, melt and mold ACGC, Lord, into the kind of church you want us to be, O oh God. And help us, Lord, to be a blessing to our community and to the surrounding communities, O oh God. Salamat po, Panginoon, muli sa araw na ito. Help us, Lord, to be fruitful this day. Help us, Lord, to be efficient sa aming pong mga gawain, not only today, but even the whole week. Lord, we give you all the glory and honor. And dismiss us, Lord, with your guidance and your direction. Help us, Lord, to always give you thanks and to magnify you, Lord, sa buong buhay namin. Now, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may God bless you and keep you. May His peace and guidance be upon you from day to day sa buhay mo, ngayon at magpakailanman. Amen at Amen. Good morning everyone and God bless us all.
光。